fluoride. That's a big word. That's the F word in dental care. As far as I'm concerned, it's the F word. <laughs> um, so fluoride should not be in your body. It's a toxin like you talked about. That's, that's probably one of the, the main reasons I'm so against fluoride. The only way a baby is born with fluoride in their body is if mom has fluoride in her body. So when you think about it like that, it's it, knowing all the harmful things it does. Why would we want to put that in our products, in our mouth, in our body on purpose? Fluoride at, at um, even at lower doses can be absorbed into the bone. It's um, it's fluorosis of the bone, which basically means it, 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 it's a weakened part of the bone. What fluoride does in the tooth is it will actually kick out a mineral and replace it with fluoride. So it's actually going to get into your hydroxyapatite, possibly even into the layer beneath, which is your dentin. Once it gets into your dentin area, because it can get in there, especially if you have pits that are deeper, it will kick out some of the, the um, minerals in the dentin. The dentin has some minerals. It's fluid filled, has some minerals, but it's protective of your pulp, which has your blood vessel for the tooth and your, your nerves. So if fluoride is a neurotoxin, and it gets into your bloodstream, it can cause problems, not just in your neurologic system, but everywhere. And this is one of the other ways that it can get in is right here at the in, inside your tooth. What they did find, uh, and, and this research was buried, um, they, the original study that they did was a short study that showed that fluoride works. Fluoride makes your teeth. And, and the whole idea behind it was fluoride was supposed to be harder than your teeth. So it would make your teeth stronger. But the, in the initial research that they did, which was a really tiny study, came out and said, yeah, fluoride works. It, it makes your teeth stronger. The longer they did the research, the more they found that's not true. And when they found that it wasn't true, they pretty much buried the research. They never told anybody. They never let anybody know. And they buried the research. So you wouldn't know that fluoride doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so that that's, um, that's my take on fluoride. I, yeah. I, you don't need it. Hydroxyapatite, this is where hydroxyapatite comes in and, and it's a pretty new ingredient. It has to be nano. You want nano. So you want to make sure that the, the product that you're using, it says nano hydroxyapatite. That's what we use in ours. Nano hydroxyapatite is the tiniest tiny, like your the pits in your teeth are tiny. If it's not nano, it's going to be too big. You're going to be spitting it back out in the sink. So you want to make sure that it's nano hydroxyapatite because it's better than fluoride. Here's the idea. Here's the thing. And and I just to back that up, I've read studies in recent days com directly comparing fluoride interventions with hydroxyapatite, finding hydroxyapatite is as good or better. Or better or better. It's not going to do any harm to the body. It, yeah. it really like calcium and phosphate that's in your body anyway. So it's not going to do cause the harm that um, potentially fluoride could. Yeah, it's, I should uh, say as good or better at the level of teeth without being neurotoxic, which is no, a right. added benefit. <laughs> right, and you know, and if you do ingest it, then your bone could use it because that's supposed to be in your bone. What's interesting is your, your teeth, this is the other component when people say you can't heal a cavity. Um, your teeth and your bone are made up of the exact same minerals, calcium and phos, uh, and you, if you break a bone, we can heal it. We know that. So the people that believe if you have a cavity, I, I ask if your teeth and your bone are the same, then why do you believe you can't heal a cavity? Because you should, if, if you're just going by logic, same, you know, same thing, you should be able to heal a cavity. Teeth are actually harder than bone. And the reason that they're actually stronger than bone is because of the environment that your teeth are in. They're always exposed to acid. You have to think about your bone. Your bone is housed in your body. Your pH is 7.35 to 7.45, which is neutral. So you're not exposed to acidic environments going back to alkaline. It's very stable in your body. So when you break a bone, super easy for your body to heal because it's not competing with this acid environment. But inside your mouth, your enamel has to be harder than the bone because it's exposed to acids on a regular basis. So to heal a cavity, we have to just get rid of the acids, expose your tooth to an alkaline environment with minerals, detox the environment, and you're going to be able to heal that cavity very quickly. 
it just depends on the, the cavity. But I've actually had customers that needed root canals switch to those three things, brushing with a uh, dirty mouth is what mine is called, dirty mouth tooth powder, and um, actually not need a root canal because they've been able to mineralize it. I always tell people, they ask me, you know, I have a, I need a root canal. Do you think I can heal it? And I always tell them if you are not in pain and there's no infection, then I feel that it's safe to try to heal it. But if you're having pain or there's you know, infection, then I would recommend doing what your dentist suggests, just because that shows that it's a little bit more involved. So what other types of dental procedures or, or dental scenarios or dental health issues might um, are, are, are particularly problematic for people? So I, I know a couple areas offhand that I'm aware of are fluoride, which you've already mentioned, and, uh, and mercury issues. Mm -hmm. So let's go into those a bit more in, in depth. And then maybe there's some other stuff that I'm not aware of. I'm sure there there's, I mean, I know you're like, there's like a million different things that, that you know how to do. And I, my understanding of dental health is pretty superficial compared to yours, but um, so let's talk about fluoride first. Okay. So what's, what's the deal with that? I know that it's something that's added in the water supply in the U S it's, you know, with the idea that it's going to improve our, our dental health and it's very commonly used in dental practices. What's, what's the science on fluoride? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because we're, we're given so much of this in our science courses in dental school that, that fluoride's great, but actually, you know, this many years later, when I read some of those studies, it's really, it's really not solid science. Um, and around the 1920s, they discovered that, fluoride would, they said, harden enamel. So then the theory was, well, if it hardens enamel and enamel soft with decay, then maybe it'll help prevent decay. Um, the issue is, is that, well, it's multifactorial, but when fluoride started being put in the water as a public health service, essentially to reach impoverished communities that had a higher cavity index, um, we started seeing a lot, lot more problems developing because that was the same time that we started putting it in toothpaste and in other water sources. So fluoride used to be used to treat thyroid disease, as you know, that they would give it in high doses to suppress the thyroid. I'm seeing a lot of people with um, hypo and hyperfluorosis, which is the fluoride's actually altering the state of their enamel in a way that it's modeled, it's ill-formed. I'm seeing that a lot in a lot of young kids now. And what people don't realize is even if they avoid fluoride from the drinking water, oh, I only drink bottled water. Oh, I'll, I'll skip that toothpaste. It's actually in everything. If you get your Starbucks coffee in the morning, it's probably made with fluoridated water. Yeah, water yeah. yeah if you get uh, orange juice from concentrate, depending on the state, when they concentrate it down, it's getting a lot of fluoride in there. So there's a lot of hidden sources from it. But the science itself is that they believe it was correlated that fluoride would harden enamel. So now dentists use it for everything. If you have sensitive teeth, if their restoration they did isn't working out that well, they'll just put a, a coat of fluoride varnish on it. We've kind of, it's evolved into this cure-all um, when it actually isn't curing anything. Right. Now, I think there's also a distinction between topical use of mm -hmm. fluoride as far as, you know, a mouthwash or a, some kind of paste or something like that, a toothpaste even, or various other dental treatments that they might do with fluoride directly in the mouth. It's another thing to put it in the drinking water. Yes. Where you're, drink, you're consuming it and now it's going systemic. Right. So, you know, I, I've done quite a bit of research on fluoride. I know it's a mitochondrial toxin. So mm -hmm. there's a clear link with that and fatigue. There's also a link with fatigue in the sense that, like you mentioned, it, fluoride suppresses thyroid function. And uh, I know Isabella Wentz and and um, and my friend Dr. Alan Christensen have have talked about that uh, quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, it seems it's it's quite a it's quite a bold move, I think, to go from saying something's good for your teeth, so let's start drinking it, where it gets absorbed into your bloodstream all the time as a daily basis in all the water you consume. You know, I don't know much about the fluoride process of extraction back when they did the initial studies back in the 20s. But now they're using a lot of fluorine also and trying to convert it. So essentially you're getting fertilizer type properties that are also being now ingested into mm. our water. So 
it is a powerful toxin though. I mean, I, we're told, do not let your patients swallow this, especially when we're giving any of the topical varnishes or whatnot. We can't give it below age three if the kids aren't allowed to swallow the toothpaste. But the fact of the matter is that it happens quite often. If you'll notice on that uh, periodic table, fluoride is at the top. It's the fastest, most reactive, and most dangerous of all of those elements. And so, and, and it happens to be in the water supply in exactly. many it countries, including the U.S. To be right, <laughs> because of some uh, ridiculous uh, part of a study that was taken from the 1950s. Not the whole study. They didn't look at the whole thing. They just looked at one little piece of the study that said, "Oh, it just so happens that these kids don't have as many kid cavities as these other kids," mm -hmm. and that's the one piece they looked at. Okay. And so let's actually just maybe elaborate on that a bit. So, yeah. um, this is an example, one of not very many examples of essentially a medical intervention being done on the entire population. And most people are not even aware of, of this fact that the government decided to knowingly add this chemical fluoride to the water supply because of the research that you just referred to sh linking fluoride consumption with lower risk of cavities. So they're giving this to everybody in the drinking water all the time. Um, what, so as, as a dentist who has studied this issue, what, what is your, obviously we're just alluding to it, but what is your take on this sort of popula population level intervention on healthy, disease-free, you know, cavity-free people. Um, what are the positives of fluoride, if you think there are any, and what are the, the negatives? There are no benefits to putting fluoride in the water. Zero. Are there any with topical fluoride, like used Ab in the mouth? Absolutely not, because the patient's going to swallow some, regardless okay. of how much you put on, they're going to ingest some fluoride. But does it, does it actually work? in the mouth to prevent cavities or to promote re recalcification? Is that aspect of it true at all? Is there any grain of truth in it? Absolutely. You can okay. take fluoride and replace part of the hydroxyapatite mineral in the teeth. Mm -hmm. And supposedly, again, it depends on which part of the research you read. Supposedly, that makes the tooth more resistant to decay. Mm -hmm. The downside is all of the other negative benefits or negative effects that you get from that proposed benefit, mm -hmm. which include brittle bone. Uh, there were some studies that just barely came out showing that fluoride makes our kids stupid. It decreases the IQ of kids across the board. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it, irrefutable evidence. So many studies showing that. So fluoridation is the greatest fraud perpetuated on the human race. Mm. That's a quote from, uh, I think it's called Fluoride, the Great Debate. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many books on the topic, but absolutely water fluoridation is stupid, just plain stupid. This, this, is, this is a bit of a digression, but I, I just can't resist given what we've <laughs> gone through in the world um, in the last two years. You know, I think ah, there's, yes. th th there's so many and this topic has been highly politicized. So, you know, you always have to be careful how you phrase things so as to not anger one or the other side of the political spectrum. I'm not in this for the political side. I, I'm, I'm just a science guy and I yep. have a certain, I have a take on things and I think I've been- we have that in common. Yeah, I think I've been consistently proven correct as I imagine you have. Um, but one, one thing that is worth pointing out here is many people operate with the assumption their, their whole lives, they grow up with this assumption, and I did, that, you know, the, the big decisions about what happens by, you know, government and these health bodies, they are based on just, you know, decades of the most solid evidence possible. They never roll out, you know, a public health intervention unless all of the greatest minds and the best experts in that field have shown conclusively and, you know, a mountain of research that it's I wish that totally, was totally effective and unbelievably safe. I wish and, that was true. And then as, as you start to dig into the science and you become highly scientifically literate, you, you learn about these subjects, you discover 
example after example of things like this. They're fluoridating the water of hundreds of millions of people based on terrible evidence. And when there is actually evidence showing all kinds of toxic effects, thyroid toxic effects, neurotoxic effects, and they're still doing it, you know? And, and so you, you start to see through the veil of this, this worldview of, yeah, all the experts are just looking out for us. They're all, they would only do something if they have great, amazing evidence. It's all the best minds in the world. You know, you, you start to realize, oh my gosh, these people are just humans and they make mistakes or they're corrupt or, you know, they're operating, they're making bad decisions and they're not modifying them, you know, in the face of evidence showing that the decision was wrong. And you start to realize how fallible and how fragile the whole system is, you know, and I, I think this is just, it's highly relevant to what's going on in the world in the last two years as well. I couldn't agree more.